Hello everyone! This is Loopy Liss and welcome back to Planet Zoo! You know what we're doing today, we are making another habitat in the form of a speed build video and I am very very excited for this one. I absolutely adore red pandas and this habitat is actually kind of different as well from anything else that I've done before. As you can see, the start of this already looks a little bit bizarre but it will make sense shortly. I'm trying a few things out in this video that I haven't done before, so it's a, it's a little messy at the beginning, but it, it comes together. It does definitely come together, and the end product, I, I think, I think is pretty good. Like, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> All right, so basically, we are going to have a bridge going across the visitor path. Now, this means that the visitors will be able to look up see a red panda above them and see the little bitty bitty paws and I think that's awesome. One thing I will say is what you see here with our bridge I do go back and change it because I feel I, I just didn't know what to do with it so I've simplified it and I think it looks way better than just that thing just above the ground just you know in the air like that I just don't I didn't like how that looked but we, we figure it out. We could do something better with it. We get a different glass and we put it in. This is exactly what I'm doing actually right now. I think I'm taking it apart. And I am putting it in very, very simply. Very, very simple. Panes of glass going across. And I think, I think it looks fine. It, I mean, I, one thing I didn't do is I didn't do like a barrier along the edges which I failed to do later as well. So the end product actually doesn't have you know, a ledge to, you know, stop the red pandas from falling off in, into someone's face. A face full of red panda isn't what you expect when you go to the zoo. So, <laughs> oh, that's an image. Remember, if you enjoy this video, feel free to hit that thumbs up and give it a like. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any more Planet Zoo content by me because you know it's going to be coming up. There's lots of more Planet Zoo content coming up, I promise. I am not tired of this game yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, a nice little red panda fact for you now. They are vegetarian carnivores. Now that sounds a bit strange, right? But carnivore in this case doesn't actually mean meat eater. Carnivore is a biological order that includes groups like bears, dogs, and cats. And while these animals are generally carnivores, some are on omnivores as well, and some are vegetarians. Red pandas are classified as carnivores because they're descended from the same ancestors as the other carnivores, but they rarely eat anything other than bamboo and a few insects as well. In connection with bamboo as well, they're actually not that closely related to giant pandas despite their name. In fact, from a genetic perspective, they're more like the skunks and raccoons you might find in your own backyard than the giant pandas with whom they share habitats. So that's some, that's something to think about really, but if you look at their, um, their markings a little bit and then you think of a raccoon, you can see the similarities right there. So yeah, that's uh, interesting because they, they haven't exactly got the they haven't got panderistic, making new words here, panderistic um, qualities, except for the bamboo eating. Uh, they don't specifically look like pandas, the giant pandas that we know. So yeah, I can see them as uh, connected to the raccoons and skunks, actually. More raccoons than skunks, but uh, I see it, I see it. All right, on to the habitat a little bit then. As you can see, I am making a window into their sleeping quarters. Now in a perfect world, I put an opaque window in here, but you know, it it works. If you put up the, um, the security sign in game that will allow the guests to be a bit quieter, then it works out fine because they will sleep in there and they won't be bothered, they won't be stressed out, and it works quite well. And I really like the aspect of them being able to sleep in there and the visitors being able to look in and they're like oh they're so cute and you know it's a nice um perspective to have as well as looking up and you can see one you can look to your left or depending which direction you're going left right 
but you can look through the window and you can see them sleeping in there and I think that's adorable. I think that's really, really nice. So yeah, yeah, using a lot of rocks in this habitat, as you can see. Uh, I'm making sure, as uh, previous, to place each rock um, at a different angle, uh, switching up the rocks that I'm using each time I lay one down, just to have a different, um, a different look, so it doesn't look like I'm using the same one every single time. Even if you turn it sometimes, depending on the angle that you're going for, it will not look like the same rock, so that's something handy to know. But when using different rocks alongside other rocks, it does make for a more naturalistic... Is that even a word? I'm making new words today. Naturalistic, that sounds like a real word. But it, it, it basically looks more natural, is what I'm trying to say. Alright, another little fact for you all. The red panda is nocturnal. It is mostly active in the early morning and late afternoon. It spends most of the day resting in trees, conserving its energy. They're actually very solitary creatures, except for when the breeding season is in, when they start to form pairs. They're actually quite territorial. They use glandular sacs, which produce a scent which they use to mark territorial boundaries. They rub their sacs on various objects in the wild to mark that territory. Additionally, they may also mark territory by using regular defecation sites. They actually have a uh, mild, non-aggressive disposition. So yeah, they're not that um, keen on being too violent, by the sounds of it, which I can, I can see. They don't look like a very violent animal, but I'm sure they would be if they, too ne if they would need to be. Alright, so we're just finishing up on that rock work now, pretty much. About to start planting in some plants. Which I had to change around a little bit later, because apparently they can totally... And I, I, I should have thought of this, this is like not smart of me. But they can climb trees and then jump onto the rocks. And then they can jump out of the habitat. Not ideal, so I had to change some of the ones around, but no biggie, no biggie. It still looks quite full in the end. So we're just about to start placing some down right now, after we've sorted out the terrain. Wanted to make it quite lush, quite lush grass mostly. Bit of soil here and there, bit of rock work inside, you know, because that makes sense. And obviously the cliffy kind of like slope upwards contains a little bit of rock in it as well. More soil than anything going up flowery, but more green in there as well, just to add a mixture to it. I just think the mixture of soil, rock, and uh, grass does give a nice effect. And as you could see just then, with the long grass, if your animal does like long grass and it doesn't mind a little bit in there, then you can place it in between the rocks. If you think about it as your own back garden, there are parts where you find it hard to mow down that part, right? So there's long grass that kind of stays there, it lingers there, because your mower can't quite reach it. So that's the kind of effect that it kind of has here. Because it's right up against the rocks, it's kind of in nooks and crannies a little bit, then that long grass will consistently stay there. So that's the sense I make from that anyway. That is my logic behind it. Alright, here's a fact for those that have not seen a red panda before. They are actually the size of a large domesticated cat. So if you've never seen a red panda before and you wanted to get kind of gauge the size of him, then that is basically the size of them. That, they're roughly around the same size as a large domesticated cat. So think of the fattest cat you've seen and they might be around that size. <laughs> But I do hope, if you haven't seen a red panda in real life, I, I would like to hope that one day you will get to see a red panda, because they are absolutely adorable. I went to um, Zurich Zoo, um, like not too long ago actually, me and my boyfriend, we went to Switzerland for a weekend and we ended up going to the zoo there. Highly recommend by the way, beautiful place. But we actually saw some red pandas and they came up right close to the enclo to like the little barrier. They didn't jump towards us or anything, even though it was quite open and they probably could if they wanted to. But yeah, they, they're so adorable when you get up close to them. They have like almost like little whiskers kind of. And yeah, I just hope you get to have a chance to um, see a red panda like right in front of you like I did. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. It's a great, it's a great animal to see close up. As you can see with this avatar, I am trying to make sure that the environment is quite lively and green and, you know, full of plant life. 
It's a little bit hard with how I set this up. It's a bit different. Uh, a little bit not what I'm used to when it comes to planting things on. But I give it a good go and I think it looks quite nice. I made sure that some parts were more uh, full than others. So you have to really, if you're a visitor, you have to really look for that red panda. Because that's what zoos do. They make you look. They do. They make you look for the animal. They make it, like with some enclosures, they do fill it up enough so that you actually have to, it's like a little search. It's a reward to see the animal. You get to have a little look around and, oh, I can't see it. I can't see it. And then there it is. You can see that little red. And then they emerge from the bush or they emerge from the trees and there they are. And then you, you just feel really good because you found it. You found it yourself and you found it after they've been hiding away. But that's what zoos like to do. They do like to make you look for the animal. So as usual, this habitat will be up on the workshop and you will be able to download it for your zoo. The only thing that you'll have to do is place in the path. Now that is a six, uh, six meter wide path. Six, is it six meters wide? It's, it's the number six. Like, I don't know if it's meters. It's not meters. That's too wide. But it's the number six. You stretch it to six and then you're good. You can put that through the uh, underneath the bridge and you are golden. You have the habitat set up correctly. That is all you need to worry about is that path when you place this down in your zoo. Using trees again as bushes today for this habitat. Nothing too crazy, just a little cluster here and there. I kind of didn't know what to do to the slope going up towards the, uh, the uh, uh, mirror, the window bridge. Uh, so I kind of just kind of made it look like there was uh, some vegetation climbing up towards it because I couldn't have it go all the way up. It just didn't make sense in my head because it's a very thin uh, amount of terrain at the top there. So having it stretch up on the thicker parts made sense to me. Uh, any other part higher than that, it just didn't quite look right. So that's what you can see me doing here. I'm using, uh, I think that's bracken. I don't think that's bracken actually. It's uh, a different one. But I'm using that plant, whatever that one is to um, make sure that it, it doesn't look completely bare. I also add in some climbing frames, nothing too crazy, just uh, just a little bit to up the climbing area a little bit. Because I noticed that um, they are actually going to one tree in particular a lot because they really like that tree, the really tall one. They were both in it at one point, which uh, you might see at the end now. I don't know if I captured it, but you will see some nice footage of them in a sec, so don't worry, it's going to be really, really nice to see. We are literally done right here. Just placing down some uh, water, food areas, and enrichment items. Now my plan was to have an enrichment item right at the very tippy top of that, uh, that glass window up there. And I think I made the right decision there. Except for the fact that it's a ball and it could totally roll off because I didn't add a barrier to the window, to the glass like. Should probably do that. Didn't end up doing it. Forgot about it. Just didn't didn't think about it when I was building this. But I thought about it after and it was too late. But, you know, that's fine. But it could totally roll off and hit uh, someone in the head. Oh well, you know, it's fine. There I am. I'm placing that down now, I think. Trying out other things didn't quite work. Then I placed the ball right on top there. And I'm very, very happy with how that uh, works out. Because it does attract them up there. So that's brilliant. All right, we are looking good. Just topping up the last little pieces, fixing some terrain issues after placing down the enrichment items, and... Hello, Red Panda! In their favorite tree, actually. Yes, all of the views, comments on by these visitors at the park, they are loving the view, so this habitat works really well for a good view. The animals are using the bridge, the little red pandas. Look at him marching across the bridge like he owns the place because he totally does. <laughs> yeah, this whole habitat, I'm really, really happy with it because they use every single part. They use the bridge, they go across each side, and they're just really involved in, in, in their own environment here. It's really, really nice to see. If you want to see me do a specific habitat for a certain animal that you've got in mind, please feel free to comment below with the animal that you suggest. I might just do it. Big thanks to Enjoy Bacon for recommending me do a red panda habitat today. Really enjoyed making this one. But let me know what you think. I'd love to have some feedback on this one. Feel free to leave some in the comments. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like, comment, subscribe, share this video, I'd really appreciate that too. And I will see you.
in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.